Good day, good day, good day, great Wolf. Uh Today we are going to talk about motion on an inclined surface. So let's have an inclined surface like this. And let's just assume that we have a box here. Let's have a box here. And uh, we have an angle of yes of an incline and a box like this. This is the angle of the incline and this is the box. Now remember, this box can slide down and it can also be pulled uh, up like this. So in this case, let's assume the ball, the, the box, not the ball, so to say. The box is being pulled up. So an applied force uh, or a certain force has been applied to push the box up. And uh, we are told that this is a rough surface, meaning that even the frictional force will be there. So this is the friction force here. So we know that we also have the normal force. So if you check, the normal force is perpendicular to the surface. That's the normal force. So the frictional force, uh, it, it, it pulls towards the left hand side whereas now it's opposing actually the motion of the box if you check it out this box is not going there up and down like up i mean towards the direction of the normal force no it doesn't go like that it only goes to the direction of the force applied or it can also go to the direction of the frictional force but in this case if you check the friction force is very small compared to the magnitude of the force applied due to this arrow length here. So it simply means that the box is being pushed upwards. In other words, the motion is the one that is going towards this direction like this, upwards like that. Now, the force of gravity, it goes like this. I want you to pay attention to the force of gravity. If you check this one out, the force of gravity is pulling down like this. It's unlike uh, on the horizontal surface where by now the force of gravity or the line or the arrow that indicate force of gravity was just straight like that. In this case, in an inclined surface, the force of gravity is written like this. So we are going to cover what do we mean by parallel force and also the perpendicular force. That's what we are going to cover as far as this video is concerned. Now... I want you to draw a line straight from the normal force going straight like this and also call it F perpendicular. Why? Because this is the force that is perpendicular to the surface. If you check, it just goes straight 90 degrees to the, what? To the surface. And we can also have another force like this, right? That is parallel to the surface that's what we mean when i said f parallel can you see it's parallel if you check this arrow here it's going like this right this arrow it's going like this so it is parallel with this surface can you see the surface is going like this so in other words this one and this one are parallel that's what i mean when you said parallel force or force f parallel but the perpendicular one you just enter through 90 degree to the surface now, let's uh, have a 90 degree box to show that uh, this is perpendicular actually. Then, the angle that is supposed to be here, if you check, we have a triangle this time around, is the same as the angle of an incline. That's uh, one more thing that I want you to take note, that this angle of an incline is the same with this angle that I just drew here from this uh triangle that i produce meaning that if the angle of incline was given to be 30 degrees 30 degree not 30 degrees celsius the moment we talk about degrees celsius we are referring to temperature let's assume the angle was 30 degree this simply means that even here this angle was going to be 30 degree because this angle is the same as this angle i can even prove it it's just that for the sake of this video uh I want to focus much on uh, the, the, the important concept. However, it can also be proven. I can even prove that this angle is the same as this one. Now, 
from there let's uh draw a free body diagram of this situation if we were to draw a free dot body diagram we will write a dot like this we draw now the force that is applied f applied we have the normal force and if you check the force applied is going that side the normal force is going that side the gravity is going down like that this is the force of gravity f, f parallel not force of gravity f parallel then we have frictional force and then frictional force indicated by fk from there other than f parallel other than f perpendicular we have f parallel like this so this is a free body diagram of uh, this situation now so now uh this one is not supposed to be f parallel i made a mistake let me draw it. let me rewrite it well uh, i will i write it yeah let me have my pen yeah so this one is supposed to be fg it's your force of gravity right fg like this and then the f perpendicular obviously something that will come like that as indicated here in this case right so f perpendicular is something that will come down like this one so so that the f parallel will come here but this time around i have already indicated the f parallel here right from there i want you to think about the cartesian plane to say uh, i'm drawing this cartesian plane to remind you how do we apply cos how do we apply sine like tan is opposite of adjacent cos it's adjacent of hypotenuse sine it's opposite of hypotenuse so i want you to think about something if we have cartesian plane here and have a triangle like this this side will be your y-axis and this side will be your radius whereas the x-axis will be underneath here so the same can apply if this triangle can be drawn to any quadrant of, of uh, to any quadrant among the one two three four fourth quadrant so it will still be applicable meaning that this side will always be the y axis the x axis is always this one indicated in the red line like this so now we the angle obviously will be somewhere here or here or somewhere here and so on like that now i want you to use this minimotic to remember what does sign tell us or which one are we going to divide as far as sign is concerned and cause soccer tour this soccer tour we simply saying the so part is just simple means that it's a sign this s is for sign then o is mean opposite opposite you can see that it's y this y is opposite y opposite y opposite y is opposite then it simply means that uh sign you are focusing on the y axis part divided by the radius part adjacent we are just talking to we are referring to the x axis part divided by the radius part opposite of adjacent it's y over x adjacent it's more like the x axis the adjacent part which x axis you can see that this is the x axis and if you check it out normally or in most cases the y or this side for y is very small the side for x is the second best being small but from being small or the middle one in terms of the length but the radius one it's always the longest side uh, of this triangle the radius one which is the hypotenuse actually let's call it hypotenuse for the sake of this video so this hypotenuse is the one that is very long and even if you check it here you can see that this the, the distance from this point to this point is very long meaning that that's the longest side of this triangle which is hypotenuse because this can be confusing especially if now this graph uh, the, this triangle uh, it, it is situated in different manner than this one you can see it now it's more like packed nicely and so on and so forth so if you rotate or you were to rotate this 
it can be confusing to some to say which one is which especially as far as the science is concerned now if now you have your angle theta here it simply means that that opponent part or opposite part is your y which is the opposite part right then the one that is more like opposite to this 90 degree is the hypotenuse one then from there the one that is opposite to to the side that does not have the angle or whereby the angle is not even written then it should be your adjacent like that so we're going to apply this uh, uh what i've just explained here in this kind of uh, question like this for so for example if you check this triangle that we draw here uh, let me have the pointer if you check this triangle the angle that is opposite to uh, the side that is opposite to this angle which is this one if we check it out it's f parallel if we check it out the angle that is opposite to this angle here it's opposite meaning that you are opposite the same opposite that is indicated by y here or opposite on top it's your f parallel the side that is perpendicular uh, that is op the opposite of the 90 degree celsius it's your hypotenuse if you check we have 90 degree here, that side it's called hypotenuse and it's the longest in terms of uh, the length if you check that's the side of fg force of gravity and if you check it out it's the longest side now i want us to check this triangle out so that we can see if there is understanding let's say we have the angle if you check this one out you must check which one is the longest side then 90 degrees here obviously this one will be your f parallel why because that's the uh, the side that is the opposite of the angle but the opposite of the 90 degree one or okay, can check it here opposite of the 90 degree one is the hypotenuse the longest and even if you check it out the distance from here to this side is longer compared to the distance from this side going here and also from this side going there to say this is the hypotenuse this is the adjacent but if you check this triangle it uh it is kind of rotated it's no longer the same as like this is similar but the way it has been rotated is no longer situated in a nice position like this so it can be confusing to many of you so to avoid confusing just take note that this angle the opposite side of that angle that's what we mean when we said opposite uh, and so on and so forth so the f parallel can be referred to as opposite force of gravity is going to be our radius or hypotenuse then the adjacent side will be this one which is the f perpendicular and we can see from this table that we draw here on our incline to say that's f parallel which is the adjacent one so i want us to look at this in this manner i want us to apply this soccer toy to say if now you are here and you said sine theta if you check it out sine theta it says what sine theta it says opposite of hypotenuse let's come here and say sine theta what is opposite if you check opposite is this one what is hypotenuse hypotenuse is fg so it simply means that sine theta is equal to f parallel over fg then we can now uh do cross multiple and divide this side by one and say one multiply by f parallel is equal to fg multiply by sine theta then we will find out that uh the answer however let's also note that fg is equal to mg so we're going to have our f parallel being equals to fg sine theta however we can replace this fg with mg sine theta like that from there let's go and do cos theta cos theta if we come here what does cos theta says cos it, it says adjacent of hypotenuse cos theta adjacent of hypotenuse if you said cos theta what is the adjacent the adjacent is this side here which is f parallel of what hypotenuse hypotenuse that's the longest side in terms of the length which is fg that's why i wrote it like this then we divide by one and cross multiple after cross multiple it can be found that f 
parallel uh, f perpendicular sorry f perpendicular multiplied by one is equal to fg multiplied by cos theta then it should be like this from there we can replace fg with mg then we find something like that so uh the most important equations here is this one and this one the f parallel one to say f parallel always it uh, is the same as mg sine theta then f perpendicular is the same as uh, mg cos theta it's very important to differentiate between the two uh, because you 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 are going to have a problem if you can't differentiate between the two because if we are talking about the the parallel motion we talk about sine but if we are talking about the perpendicular one then we talk about the the cos so it's very important to take note of that so uh, other than that thank you so much for watching this video if you haven't subscribed please kindly do so and join this growing family for the sake of and purpose of learning thank you